Hi there. Uh, on a previous video, I've been trying to uh, turn steel on this uh, wood lathe. Um, I needed to turn steel to make this little piece there for another project you can see on my uh, on my channel. And the purpose was to uh, make the end of the uh, threaded rod a little smaller, uh, so I could uh, smash it down and it would hold this uh, resting piece right here. So the method I used was uh, not very safe, but it was more experimental. And uh, what I did is this, uh, use this um, handheld tool with a carbide bit on the end right here. And I would just use on the tool rest uh, like we do on a regular uh, wood lathe uh, working. So I decided to change uh, the method, uh, try new stuff. And for that, uh, I used this uh, milling vise here that I mounted on the uh, wood lathe. So, I was not the one holding the, um, the tool, which is uh, fairly uh, much safer. Uh, but at the same time, um, everything's jammed together. So if something catches and doesn't uh, let the uh, piece turn correctly, well, it, something go wrong and you don't know where it's gonna break. But uh, uh, since this was made very sturdy, I was confident that it was uh, fairly safe. So I, I'll show you how I did this. All right, so um, what I was trying to do with this is make this piece out of aluminum. So I turned this as, uh, first. And when I saw it worked very well, I decided to uh, try a steel. You can see here the piece, it turned very well. Well, now it's a little uh, black because I've been um, done doing a heat treatment with it. So the way I build this is uh, using this milling vise. Um, I'll show you how I've done it. So I got my wood lathe, which is attached to this table. Uh, I got a big two by 12 here or two by 10. I know, I think it's two by 12. And I got this uh, long piece right here, which is thin uh, folded metal. So, well, thin, not that thin, but I can still feel when I put a lot of pressure on it, uh, I can still feel it uh, twist a little bit. And I gotta remove all the movement possible on my uh, milling vise so it doesn't jam incorrectly into the uh, working piece. So what I did is I put a uh, piece of wood on the table, which was really well um, uh, screwed on it. And I put another one on my lathe itself and link those two together. So with all that, when I press on it, this is actually LVL material, a uh, piece of wood. So uh, it's like a huge uh, thick plywood, but uh, structural. So it does not twist. It does not change with temperature. It's very stable uh, piece of wood and very strong as well. So uh, I'll show you a few pictures on how I uh, screwed or made this and then the next step is to put a, a milling vise. So, my milling vise has uh, some places you can screw stuff on. Uh, I was uncomfortable making a bunch of holes in this and just finding the right spot. I needed flexible uh, angles, you know, to move it around. So what I did, I took this uh, half inch uh, steel plate and made the threaded rod holes right in it and uh, screwed my, uh, my, lay, my milling vise right on it. And so after that, I got those two holes, which I used to screw my, um, my piece right on the table. Actually, just one of them. So when I'm ready to use it, I just find the right spot. And then what I do is take my, um, here it is, my bit. And it's important to tighten it up very well. And I got this to hold my tool. And this was actually made for the uh, copying lathe. So it, it used to hold um, bits like this right in it 
in both ways. There's, that's why the other hole right here. And that's easy to hold because this is round. So I just put it right here, find the right angle. One thing bothers me about this though is that the uh, length here is uh, very long and I want it to be quite short because this is uh, sturdier than this part so there's t I can feel some flex in uh, flexion in this while I use it but um, anyway I'll show you later on how to use it so you have less uh, flex on it you just bite less into the material actually so what happens is that um, you position the angle so it's parallel you can test the parallelness if that's a word excuse my English uh, by moving it down and then once you found the right angle you finally at first I uh, didn't know how this would react so I made this little hole, pilot hole here and uh, just drew a wooden screw right in it just to prevent it from turning if this wasn't doing the job enough so that's the actual position for going left to right but when i got a bigger piece and want to go like a, with i done with the aluminum when it was actually like this or wanted to go inside well what i do is unscrew it then turn it around oh, get this out of the way and I got this little other hole right here so I can move it around and do the same steps as aligning it and when I got my right alignment I got this um, I didn't use this at first for the aluminum. I thought this would do the job. And actually it worked really well. I used this instead. It worked really well because of the thin point and if I just moved it gradually, it did uh, do a fine job. Um, but I think I'm gonna try aluminum with uh, this carbide piece. I think it's gonna work better. It did an amazing job for steel. Um, so that's the overall way of doing it. I, well, actually, I've done it. That's the overall way I've uh, done it. And it worked fine. Uh, the steel I used was a salvage rod from a printer, a laser printer. So it had a very strong steel alloy. I don't know what kind, uh, but I figured that if it was meant for a printer, it uh, should not do any flex, uh, it's like it's gonna be strong enough and uh, not have any flexion in it so very strong
these are the um, pieces I've made so far with the milling vice method. Um, I started with aluminum, like I mentioned earlier. It worked really well because it's a soft metal, so it wouldn't um, unsharpen the tool that much. Uh, actually, it stayed sharpened uh, quite good. Uh, the problem is that I thought it would be easier because it's aluminum and it's softer, but the problem is that the piece here uh, can jam into the aluminum. I uh, don't, it's not a good aluminum because I made, uh, I melted it myself, actually. I melted this piece down with the last foam technique and um, thus it's very porous, but not that much when you look at it once it's milled. But I know it's not the perfect mix, so it looks like I had like hard aluminum at some spots, softer aluminum on other spots. And what happened is that I could feel the piece just jamming into it and like, like if it wanted to climb on my tool. And uh, at that point I had to like just like pull it back so it wouldn't like break or anything or anything just jump everywhere. Um, so I had to be very careful milling the aluminum. This was not the case with steel. Um, actually, when I use it, I just bite in it very gently and then move along the path and then removing some again and again and again. And since it was very hard metal, um, it didn't want to climb on my uh, working piece as much. I mean, I'm saying as much because it did sometimes feel that way, but uh, uh, you just got to be careful and not be, um, uh, not bite too much into the material and you'll be fine. So I made some really nice punch here, like nice milling you can do on it. Whoops, the focus is not good. There you go. So it looks, it can be very precise. And it's got a nice finish to it, very soft. And then I just heat treated those and uh, that's what gave it the crappy black color. And uh... So those were the pieces I made so far. And uh, that was actually made for a uh, air assist for laser uh, cutting machine.